We do need to talk about men. Let's face it, fellas. We've had a bad couple of million years. <laughs> We're not on a great run, lads. But the last couple of years have felt particularly toxic. Last January, a guy in Toronto hijacked a truck and drove it into a crowd of people and killed 10 of them and injured 15 more. When the police investigated this man's Facebook page, they found that the last post on it said that he was leaving that day to start the incel revolution. Now, incels is a term that refers to groups of men who exist in dark pockets of the internet, on subreddits and on the dark web, and they call themselves incels, which is a portmanteau meaning involuntarily celibate. Incels meaning involuntarily Basically, me between the years 1985 and 2006. And I know that there are some boffins in here going, hold on, were you a 21 year old virgin? And to those people, let me just say this, shut the fuck up! Just shut the fuck up! It's hard for some boys. Also, it happened in February and I'm an August birthday, so shut the fuck up! I'm doing a show, I don't have time for your maths! Anyway, look, we all go through periods of time in our life where we are involuntarily celibate. That happens to all of us, right? No? <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't realise I was in Hipster Central in Hackney, where you've all got nothing to do but ride penny farthings, wax your moustaches and participate in a non-stop 24-7 fuck festival. <laughs> you fucking people sicken me. <laughs> anyway, outside of Hackney, in the civilised world, there are times where some of us find it difficult to give this shit away. But what do we do? We don't kill people. That's weird. What do we do? We handle our business. We go to our rooms and we masturbate to self-penned Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan fiction. Don't fucking judge me, 14-year-old! I can feel your judgement! This is the bit, this is the bit. I can feel... I can feel your millennial judgement! coming from right there. You have no idea. I came of age in the era of dial-up internet. You either waited 45 minutes for a JPEG or you improvised. Those were your only options. You have no idea what it's like now that you can sit there streaming feature-length HD porn films on your phone, which you definitely do. I'm so sorry, Mum and Dad. <laughs> It used to be harder for us. We used to have to sit there watching a JPEG load. Mm, 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 mm. You sustaining an erection for weeks, months, years at a time. All the while hoping that no one called on the landline because that'd be the end of the whole operation. <laughs> Listen to the sad applause of the people in their late 20s and early 30s. A generation who can only achieve an orgasm when they see the top of a person's neck because that's all they ever made it to. Watch this. I just gave four men Pavlovian bonus. How you doing, Leon? What about the what? Jeez, brother, how fucking old are you? <laughs> Holy heck. You've really suffered. You've been knocking, knocking one out to catalogs. That's a hard situation for you. I am aware that there are people in here who are older than 30 and who are sat here right now going, oh, I'm sorry that you had access to dial-up internet. We would have liked access to any internet whatsoever. If we wanted to see pornography, we used to have to forage in bushes. Like tumescent truffle pigs just wallowing in filth by a canal, all in the hope of catching a sliver of paper with a boob or a dong on it. And to you people, let me just say this, absolutely, for your generation, it was much more difficult for you to have access to pornography. But do you know what you had in compensation? Free education and affordable housing. So shut the fuck up. Bit of fun. Um, Leon, are your parents okay? <laughs> that was 
an um, followed by a pause that was positively Harold Pinter-esque, Leon. <laughs> Our collective enjoyment has really been enhanced by your and your family's palpable discomfort. <laughs> Leon, I'm just going to ask you one more question, and it genuinely doesn't matter. If anything, it's better if the answer is, I have no idea what you're talking about, okay? What, if anything, do you understand by the phrase, dial-up internet? I have no idea. Ignore that sound, Leon. That's just a bunch of 30-year-olds who just realised they're going to die. That's all it is. It's fine. I do appreciate the way that you expressed it as well, because when I asked a young boy in Brighton if he knew what dial-up internet was, he said, I believe it's the internet of yesteryear. The fuck is that shit? We get it, Brighton. You're trendy. Now fuck off. <laughs> Listen, Leon, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. Dial-up internet is just the way we used to get on the internet. And you know when you see videos now of people in the 80s and 90s saying, this internet thing will never catch on, a lot of us didn't think the internet was going to catch on because the internet used to be absolute shite. It just used to, you know, there was no pithy URLs like Amazon.com. You used to have to put in geocities.com forward slash and then enter the entire of the Da Vinci code just to bring up a website about the pyramids in Comic Sans. And there was no Google. The best you could get was an animated paperclip asking you if you were writing a letter, even though you were never writing a letter. RIP, clip it forever in our hearts. And the actual phrase, dial-up internet, refers to a period of time where in order to get on the internet, we used to have to phone the internet and hope it was in. <laughs> now listen, after this thing happened with the incels, I thought, well, we'll have a conversation about misogyny right now, right? There's clearly a problem that men hate women and they are be becoming violent over it, right? And it's a cultural problem that we're going through and that we have been experiencing viscerally in the last couple of years. It starts with a man being caught on tape saying, when you're a star, you can do it. You can grab him by the pussy. And then he becomes president. It turns out the entertainment industry has been allowing abusers to thrive for years and years and years. And now you get these incels, these chads, these milos, these mikeys, these boys who feel so entitled to sex with women that they are willing to kill people over it. We need to have that conversation, except we never had that conversation. Instead, various international publications were full of weirdly sympathetic op-ed pieces about the plight of the humble incel. The New York Times ran a piece suggesting that we have a redistribution of sex, essentially forcing women to have sex with men so they don't kill people. Meanwhile, in this country, The Spectator magazine published an article suggesting the government provide free sex robots to incels. Now, that article was written by a man called Toby Young. Now, if you're not familiar with him, if you're not familiar with him, he sometimes occupies the position of journalist, but he doesn't identify as such. He says he's a provocateur. Now, a provocateur is a new type of public intellectual that we have to deal with, and I use the word intellectual incorrectly. Uh, <laughs> People like Toby Young, Jordan Peterson, uh, they call themselves provocateurs. Now, for those of you who haven't done A-level French like I have, a bonjour, you <laughs> will not know what provocateur means. Let me help you out. Provocateur is an ancient French word meaning cunt for money. That's all it means. Anyone who says they're a provocateur is a piece of shit for pay. That's all it means, right? Now, I found this sympathetic coverage of the incels very frustrating. Because listen, I'm a nice guy. What was that? <laughs> Fuck you, I'm a nice guy. Oh, I'm sorry, would the BBC ever hire someone with questionable morality? Hmm? <laughs> I have to do the eyebrow so people know it's a joke, because last month at one of these shows, a man went, uh, yeah! And I was like, oh, never mind. <laughs> Listen, I am a nice guy, but even I have my limits. This is the spiciest thing I'll say all night. It has got to the point where Every time there is a terrorist attack, I always think two things. The first thing I'm fine with, the second thing I'm embarrassed by, but I want to try and build some empathy so you understand what people might have been going through. The first thing I think whenever there's been a terrorist attack is, I hope everyone is okay, fine. The second thing I think whenever there's been a terrorist attack is, oh God, please be a white guy. Oh God, I want it to be a white guy so badly. Every time they're about to announce the name, I'm always like, come on, Graham Johnson. All I want to hear is the suspect is known to be a fan of Mumford and Sons and the film La La Land. 
That's all I want to hear. Because when white people kill people, no one gives a fuck. Everyone's like, ah, he was probably hungry. Maybe the internet was being weird. Come on, let's give him a sex robot. He's earned it. Whenever a white person kills someone, everyone's like, lone wolf, lone gunman. Don't ask any more questions. Lone wolf, lone gunman. When it's a person of colour, oh, these people and their disgusting cultures of violence. Look, I don't need to tell you people this. We have a massive problem with knife crime in London and across this country right now. But no one wants to have the conversations that we desperately need to have about the fact that we cut £700 million from youth services since 2010 or the fact that we've cut 20,000 police jobs since 2010. No one wants to have those conversations. All people want to talk about is drill music. Who gives a fuck about drill music? When Joe Cox was assassinated in the street, I don't remember there being a spate of op-ed pieces suggesting we round up all Morris dancers and Barry fucking Manilow. <laughs> what a piece of shit. White cultural violence is not considered a problem. The thing is, I was 16 years old when 9-11 happened. I've lived my entire life in the shadow of what having this face means at this point in human history. And racial profiling goes on to this day, and frankly, it's getting worse. And I don't mean intensity, I mean in terms of quality. Some white people, I got no idea where I am from. Last year, I thought it would be fun to shave my beard and leave the moustache. Spoiler alert, it was hilarious. I look like Super Mario slash my dad in the 80s. That, however, was not the opinion of the customs officials at Heathrow Airport as I went through the nothing to declare aisle and five of them stood up and went, where do you think you're going? <laughs> nothing to declare. <laughs> they kept asking me if I had cigarettes or cocaine because it turns out I think with a moustache I look like Super Mario slash my dad in the 80s and they thought I looked like the actual Pablo Escobar. <laughs> And listen, I shouldn't really be complaining because ultimately I haven't experienced the worst forms of racial profiling. Black people have a much harder time. If I had a Muslim name, I'd have a much harder time, right? I, luckily, I have a Hindu name, right? Uh, Nish Kumar is a Hindu name. My name is Nish Kumar. Nish Kumar, Nish Kumar, Nish Kumar. And the reason I keep repeating that is it feels like people are hell-bent on calling me any name other than Nish Kumar, be it Ramesh Ranganathan or in the case of the Metro newspaper when they were writing a preview of a travel show I did with my friend Joel Domit and said they were very excited about the upcoming adventures of Joel Domit and Nish Patel. Nish Patel! <laughs> Holy shit, Nish Patel? Where did they conjure that from? Under the circumstances, I'm glad they didn't go with Nish Apu from The Simpsons or just Hindu Brown.